Hallelujah. 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 Giving all honor and praise, respect, glory, and allegiance to our God and our King. The Holy One, the only one in Israel. We all must say hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. How y'all feeling, brothers and sisters? How y'all feeling, brothers and sisters? Y'all look good. The Most High God is great. The Most High God is King. I just got some breaking news, brothers and sisters. This just in. God is King. No matter who's president, God is King, brothers and sisters. We don't worry about that stuff, brothers and sisters, because God is king. He's the president, the vice president, the king, the lord of lords, the king of kings. He's the master of the universe, and there's nothing that can be compared unto him. So we don't have to fret, brothers and sisters. It said, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be dismayed, brothers and sisters, because our God is king. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Holy One of Israel. Thank the Most High God for my life, the lives of my family, the lives of my loved ones, and the lives of Israel. Thank the Most High God for the time that he gave my father, Cohen Levy. Amen. Thank the Most High God for my Ema who's here and for Ema who's home watching. Thank the Most High God for all things and for everything. Brothers and sisters, the Most High God has once again allowed us to wake up this morning. He's once again allowed us to have food, clothing, and shelter. He's once again allowed us to have our senses, the ability to see, touch, taste, hear, and smell. I thank God for all things and for everything. I don't want to take any of the Most High God's blessings for granted. The Most High God allows us to get here safely. And those who are home, I pray that they're homes in safety. Brothers and sisters, this is an honor to come before the Most High God and his people. This is a blessed day. And if you didn't have a good week, I pray that you have a good Shabbat. And if you don't have a good Shabbat, I pray that you have a good week to come. Brothers and sisters, whatever you, you're doing, find some good in it, brothers and sisters. Find some peace. Find some joy. Find some happiness. Find some gladness. Because the Most High God is great, brothers and sisters. And like I said to you before, you have to be grateful for the things that you have now in order to get the bigger things, the bigger blessings. So if you not, you got a little small apartment, thank God for that little small apartment. Thank God for the heat that comes in that small apartment so that God can give you a big house, a mansion, and make sure that you get me some too, okay? So pray for me as well, brothers and sisters. We're going to get into this portion as we learn about our forefathers and our, our foremothers. Brothers and sisters, this is our history. So when you look at this and you read this, look at it like it's you. This is us. So we're going to get into the portion and we're going to talk about Avram today. And this is a blessed uh, Torah portion and I'm privileged to have this portion. We're going to get right into it because the days are shorter. You know, the, the sun go down quick now. You look up and you think that you still got... 30 minutes to cook. No, your food going to be nice and uncooked. So get prepared. That's why, you know, they say on Yom Kamishi, you should really be preparing, especially for these days. You got to iron those clothes and do all that stuff on Kamishi on Thursday, because guess what? You look up by the time you get home, you got a time to run in that shower and pray that you got some time to heat up some food or you're going to be eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And ain't nothing wrong with that. I like PB&J. But I'm just saying, on Shabbat meal, I like a little bit more extravagance. Because it's Shabbat. But we give thanks and praise to the Almighty for all things and everything. Let's get into this portion of Lech Lecha, Which means, go. Get thee out. Or literally, it means, go to you. The same way we say Shabbat Shalom to you say Shabbat Shalom to Ka. Lecha, Shabbat Shalom to you. So that's what it actually means. Go to you. And what does that mean? You're going to see, because most times going to tell them, you got to go. Right. Not going with nobody. You're going with your family, but you're going. You got to go by yourself. Go. Leave your father, leave your mama. You got to go. And this is going to be an example for our young men and young women that when you ready to get up out of your parents' house, you got to be prepared. You got to go with something and go prepared. I tell people all the time, when you leave your parents' house, you should be ready to buy a house. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but that's the truth of the matter. We don't talk about a lot of financial things on Shabbat, but guess what? This is reality. If you go going to leave your parents' house to go pay rent, you are a fool. I'm serious. I was a fool. I said, oh, I'm going to leave. My parents didn't tell me to go. I just was, I'm out. I'm on my own. I'm on my own space. But every, every month that you take that money called rent, you are throwing it down the drain. Unless it's a mortgage where it's your property, rent you're throwing down the toilet. You might as well just take the cassette, put it in the toilet, and flush it. 
because that's what you're doing. So when you leave your parents, prepare yourself to leave to go to a house that is yours with a mortgage that you are paying for a property for you and your family. Amen? Let's read some. Let's get into it. But the the 12th chapter, the first verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Jehovah said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred right. and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. He doesn't even know where he's going. He just said, go. You got to get up. Leave your kindred, leave your country, and just go from your father's house into the land that I'm going to show you. Let's read. And I will bless them that bless thee. No, verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. Right. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. Right. And thou and be thou a blessing. And be thou a blessing. Continue. And I will bless them that bless thee. Uh oh. And him that curseth thee will I curse. Uh oh. And in thee shall all Hold on. family. Hold on. He said, And I will bless thee, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and, ble and be thou a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and him that curseth thee will I curse. See, this is the part that people don't, they like to skip over. Mm -hmm. But you can't skip over this part. Those of the people that's out there that bless you, consider them blessed. But oh, the people that curse you, consider them cursed. I saw in the memes and I saw the text messages going around talking about, yeah. oh, Trump won. So, black folk gonna be picking cotton again. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something. Ain't no way I'm picking cotton. I'm not. I am not. I love my ancestors, and I love to read about them, but I am not them. I'll put something in you for real. We ain't playing those games. You're not going to have us picking cotton. We are God's children. We're blessed. So all those people that's talking about they're going to do this and go to that, don't even worry, because God got us. God got our back. You can't be afraid of the enemy. We got to do right before God so that you know for sure that God got your back. When you walk out in those streets, you got to feel confident that God got you. But if you're doing wickedness, now you should worry. If you're doing foulness out there, then you should worry. But if you're doing right before God, God got you. It don't mean that everything's going to be all peachy and everything, but God got you. Amen. I'm telling you, God put you through trials and tribulations, but God redeemed you back. He could bring you back into high positions without even without you even realizing that God is watching over you. Sometimes God takes things from you because you didn't deserve it or you didn't appreciate it or you wasn't grateful enough to, to, to enjoy it. So then God gives it back to you. Now let's see what you do with it. See, we got wisdom, knowledge, and understanding now. What are we going to do with it? Don't hold it to yourself. Teach your brother. Teach your sister. Teach your family members that don't know about who God is. Because just, you might not know. God might be saving them. God might be using you to save them. God might be telling you, yo, you, you hold this to yourself. Every Xmas come around, you don't say nothing about Xmas. Like, you know Xmas is wrong, but y'all don't say nothing. Man, listen, ask my family if I say something. I'll be tearing my cousins up. Oh, y'all still doing that foolishness? Giving them bad kids gifts? And they ain't deserve nothing. Giving them bad kids got 55s all across the board. Talking about you gonna get him the new PlayStation. You better give him a PlayStation that give him Maka. If that PlayStation do that, you better give him a PlayStation that help him study. Don't give him nothing. We gotta teach our family, teach our brothers and sisters. Go get thee out. Abraham's on a mission. Avram at this point is on a mission. Let's read. At the end of the third verse, at the end of the third verse. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Right. So there's going to be a lot of people trying to hold on to your coat, brothers and sisters. Right. A lot of people going to talk about, I'm Yisrael, I'm Yisrael. You can't shun them either. Let them be. We know who the real Yisrael is. But if they're going to serve God, then serve God. Because the ultimate mission is that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear that your whole is of our oath is God. And that's what our aim. That's our aim. But we got to do what we got to do to teach ours first. I'm not teaching nobody else unless mine know first. My Abba used to always say that. Yes, yeah, of nation, it's, it's God is for everyone and all of that good stuff. But I got to make sure that my family eat first. I'm not giving nobody else no food and I got brothers and sisters out here starving. No, my family got to eat first. My people got to eat first. Let's read. So Abram went as Jehovah had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. 
and Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. So now you think, oh, he was 75 years old. Some of us didn't even reach 75 yet. And he's on the mission. So you have no excuse to be lazy right now. You got no excuse. All y'all young men, young women, all of us, Nick, nobody probably right now, aside for a couple of elders, maybe 75 right now. We have no excuse. You got to work. You got things to do. You see something kind of looking bad, fix it. Don't walk past the garbage. You see it, fix it. Throw it out. We have to be able to do things in order to set the better example for the young men and the young women so that they can take up the baton and go forward. Let's read. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, mm -hmm. and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that had, they had gotten in Haran, right. and went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. Right. And Abram passed through the land into the place of Shechem, unto the terebinths of Mamre. And the Canaanite was then in the land. Right. And Jehovah appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And he built there an altar unto Jehovah, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence at the eighth verse unto the mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and I on the east. And he built there an altar unto Jehovah and called upon the name of Jehovah. And Avram journeyed, going on till toward the south. Mm -hmm. And there was a famine in the land at the tenth verse. And Avram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was sore in the land. Right. So there's a, a, a famine in the land. So Avram goes to Egypt because one thing we're not going to do is starve. We're going to find some food. We got to eat. Black people love to eat. We're not going to just sit there and be like, oh, there's no food in the house. You ever had? what they call no food in the house and your parents come up with something, right. you gonna figure it out. You don't got no bread. I mean, you got bread, you got syrup, you got yourself a syrup sandwich. Trust me. I said you gonna eat that syrup sandwich. I love syrup sandwiches. Some of y'all don't even know about syrup sandwiches because y'all ain't been broke enough, y'all ain't been poor enough, but now y'all missing out on the good things in life. Like a good syrup sandwich. You got spaghetti? You got tomato sauce. You don't need no basal. You got spaghetti. I think y'all just fancy with this putting turkey meat and all that stuff in it. Where y'all get that from? We just had spaghetti, and you be good. And then you get some fish. Oh, yeah, fish and spaghetti. Ain't that what that dude G Dep said? Y'all was already on fish and spaghetti. This is what we did. We ate that stuff. You got enough. You got potatoes. Listen, we made our own pizza. You got some bread. Get some fancy, if don't get Italian bread. Now you're really cooking. <laughs> Italian bread, some tomato sauce and cheese. Yep. What you got? Pizza. <laughs> That's all you need. That's pizza. We ain't going to starve, brothers and sisters. So he went down to Egypt where the food was. Let's read. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Mitzrayim that he said to Sarah, his wife, uh -huh. Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Right. And it will be, and it will come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they will say, this is his wife, and they will kill me. But thee will they keep alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and that my soul may live because of thee. So now look at the irony of this. So they said, Sarai is beautiful. She's very fair to look upon. She's a beautiful sister. When she walk in the land, they're going to say, Woo, look at that sister. She's beautiful. She look good. Avram said, you got to tell him that you're my sister because if you tell him that you're my husband, they will kill me. So think about that for a second. You got adultery right here, but you got murder right here. I'd rather murder you <laughs> than to commit adultery. Think about that for a second. I'd rather kill you, murder you, than to commit adultery. So they said, you got to tell them, we, you my, my sister, because they, they'll kill me. Let's read. And it came to pass at the 14th verse that when Abram was coming to Mitzrayim, the Egyptians beheld the woman. That she was very, very fair. fair. Listen, they saw her. They saw her and they said, that sister is bad. Yo, Pharaoh, this sister is bad. Man, I'm telling you, Pharaoh, Pharaoh probably sitting there with his bald head talking about. 
Let me, let me tell me what's going on. Tell me what's up. His bed probably down the head, rolling his bed. Pharaoh got all the gold around him. He like, and they tell him, his servants are telling him, yo, Pharaoh, man, this brother just came here. This sister is bad. And Pharaoh probably said, it's her husband. If it's her husband, go kill him. <laughs> That's what they stop and say. If it's her husband, go and kill him. Oh, it's, if it's his sister, all right, then we good, we good. But they would have killed Avram. Let's read. And the princess of Pado saw her See? and praised her. Praised her. Ooh. And the woman was taken into Pado. Must be a special lady <laughs> and a very exciting girl. Yo, they was talking about her. They was talking about her. You know that what's it? After seven? I give you the sun, the rain, the moon, the stars, and the mountains. That's what they were talking about. They praised her. That's right. Somebody know the song. I will give you the word. And no man could do that for you, sisters. So relax. I ain't giving you no sun, no rain, no moon. You think I am God? <laughs> but just the thought of it, they, you know, it works. <laughs> But I, just so y'all know, get that delu delulu out of your mind. Ain't nobody giving you no sun, no rain, no moon, no mountains. We ain't got that. We might get you a, a, a metro card to go <laughs> somewhere and some flowers. We ain't giving you no mountains. Come on, y'all. Y'all asking too much. Let's read some more. And he dealt well with Abram for her sake at the 16th verse. Mm -hmm. He had sheep and oxen, and he asses, and men servants, right. and servants, and she asses, and camels. And Yehovah plagued Pado and his right. wife with great plagues right. because of sad eyes, Abram's wife. Because the Most High don't play with that adultery stuff. You're not going to just take this man's wife. So the Most High plagued Pharaoh's house. I don't know what he plagued them with, but I imagine that it was something horrendous to make Pharaoh be like, whoa, let's read. And Pado called Abram. Yeah, hey, get Abram in here. And said, what is this that thou hast done? Why'd you lie to me? Why did this thou not tell me that she was thy wife? So the Most High revealed it. The Most High told him, that's not his sister. That's his wife. Because Pharaoh came right at Avram like, you lied to me. That's your, your sister. That's your wife. Pharaoh probably had some lumps on his head, some, some plates, some boils. His cows probably dying. All types of stuff going on around him. Because the Most High God plagued his house. Let's read. Why saidest thou she is my sister? Probably made him a leper or something. Came out like this. What are you doing? Why'd you lie to me? Most High plagued them. Let's read. So that I took her to be my wife. Right. Now therefore, behold thy wife. Take her and go thy way. Yeah. And Pado gave men charge concerning him, and they brought him on the way and his wife and all that he had. That's right. Because the Most High said, no, don't touch that lady. Don't touch that sister. I got plans for Avram and Sarah. Don't touch her. So he sent him, sent him away. And he sent him away with stuff, too. Gave him gifts. Avram already had stuff. But you're going to see in the next portion right here, Avram was rich. Let's read. 13th chapter, the first verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Avram went up out of Mitzrayim, he and his wife, and all that he had, and loped with him into the, the south. Mm -hmm. And Avram was very rich in cattle. Very rich in cattle. In silver. In and silver. Gold. And in gold. So don't talk about me when I wear all my gold. We're supposed to be rocking all this gold and silver. God bless us. We are rich. We are rich. Brothers and sisters, I know we're in captivity, but when we left Egypt, what we left with? Gold, linen, all types of things. So when I come in here with a wool coat, a sheepskin coat, don't be mad at me. I'm supposed to look rich. You're supposed to look rich. We are rich people. Wear that jewelry. Wear that stuff, man. We got to look rich. You got to look rich to feel rich. Got to look beautiful to feel beautiful. Don't come in here looking like a dust buster because people going to talk about you. So you might as well look good and look good about you and feel good about yourself. We come from riches. We come from kings and queens. He said he's rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And the word that they used was kaved. In honor, he's a, he's a high status man. This ain't no layman. This is, this is your father. So you come from that. Let's read. And he went on his journeys at the third verse from the south, even until Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, 
unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. Right. And Abram called there on the name of Jehovah. Right, because in all that we do, you always got to glorify the Almighty. Oh. When you get to your destination, glorify God. Told out Jehovah, let me get to my destination safely. Amen. When you get in the house and you realize nothing was touched, everything is well, told out Jehovah. Before you drive off, say, please, y'all, get me to my destination safely. Get into the habit of calling on God for every little thing. Because there's really no small matter. You see what's going on out here, brothers and sisters. We're not safe without God. You need God. I'm talking if you're on the train, you see people getting shot on the train too. You need God for everything. You taking that test, ask God. And listen, this is another part we got to remember. When God blesses you, right? Ask God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to maintain the blessing. Yes. I think we forget that piece. You say, God, please give me all of this money. God, give you the money. Then you spend it all. That was pointless. But ask God to give you the, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to maintain the blessing and to extend the blessing. Amen. I want to be able to get rich, but I want my family to be rich too. And I want my children's children's children to be rich. That's real wealth. So we got to pray for things like that, brothers and sisters. Pray that the Most High God allows us to get the blessing, but Yah caused me to keep the blessing. Amen. You see what I'm saying? We sometimes get the blessing, we forget. Oh, we just go out there and do whatever, and then we lose the blessing. And now you're praying for the same blessing that you had because you didn't ask God to maintain the blessing. Mm -hmm. Let's read some more. And Lot also, at the fifth verse, mm -hmm. who went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. That's right. He has some money too. And the land was not able to bear them, right. that they might dwell together. Uh -oh. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell well together. together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Pezzarite dwelt in the land. So now the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt in the land, right? Now let's think about this. This is very important. I just thought about this this morning, actually. It said, and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. And they were striving. The herdsmen were striving, right? But then that next verse says, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite was in the land. You know what that made me understand? Keep your family business to yourself. Amen. Because there's people that's watching you mm -hmm. to watch you beef with each other. Great. They waiting for you to beef with each other. The Canaanite and the Perizzite is standing right over there. And, Lot and, and, and Abraham's people was all beefing. What you think is going to happen? Somebody's going to start being like, yo, yo, Lot, yo, Lot's peoples, yo, come here. The Canaanite's going to be like, yo, Lot, y'all come over here. You see what they doing, right? I, I saw I saw when he did that, bro. They, that wasn't right. Next thing you know, the Canaanite is down with Lot and them, and Canaanites is taking over. Or the Perizzite is talking to Avram's people like, yo, Avram, yo, come here, man. You see what they did, man? Yo, them, they, they wrong for that, man. So now they ear hustling and everybody's doing that. And your family is getting more and more in turmoil because you let your family business out. That goes with everything. Keep your family business to yourself. There's counseling. I'm not talking about when you need counsel. I'm talking about you talking about, hey, sister, my, my man did this, that, and the third. And, and, and she don't got no man. She ain't got no ish. But you ish in her to death. My ish, my ish, my ish, my ish. My isha, my isha. Your man ain't got no girl, no girl even looking at him. And now you talking, talking, and guess what? They swooping in and creating more drama for you than you, than you understand. Or you got your, your brother, you talking to your brother about this, that, and the third. Yo, man, the way my isha do this, that, and the third, and your brother's a bum. How he going to tell you about anything? Or you talking to your sister and she talking about your man and, da, 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 and she's a, a chicken head. Let's be real. You got to keep it real. We got chicken heads. We got chicken heads. We got bums and we got chicken heads. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for my people. I got to talk to my people like we got some understanding. I don't want no, the young men and the young women to grow up and think that that's the right way to be. So I have to speak on it. So now you got all of this strife between each other and y'all you, dropping the ball with that because the enemy is watching you and they waiting for your downfall. They plotting against you. So we got to keep our business to each other. That's why I don't, I'm, not, I'm not pro Facebook gossip because you make Israelites look bad when you do that. There's people that's looking, they saying, 
Is that what the Israelites do? Is that how they act? Is that and y'all thinking y'all just getting it off like yeah because it, and you think you're making a good point when the whole point is that you're making the Israelite nation look terrible. That's the point. You don't do that. I don't want to talk about no 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 foolish games that you could play on Instagram or Facebook that's going to make my nation look bad. I don't want to do anything that make my sisters look bad. I don't want to do anything to make my brothers look bad. I don't want to do anything that's going to make the most high look bad. So be careful who you do things around and how you move because the enemy is watching us the whole time. Let's read some more. And Abram said unto Lot at the 8th verse, let there be no strife, I pray thee, yeah. between me and thee. Let's chill. And between my herdmen and thy herdmen. We don't got a beef. For we are brethren. Because we're brothers and sisters. Listen, and it's okay to have a, a, a argument or a disagreement. You can agree, agree to disagree sometimes. Sometimes you're not always going to agree with your brother or your sister. That's okay. But we're not enemies because we disagree. And just because I feel like you deserve a punishment and the punishment comes to you does not mean that I hate you either. It means that there has to be judgment because there's the most I said, judges and officers shall you appoint in all your gates. And once there's a judgment, do the judgment. I love you. You're still my brother. You're still my sister. But you need to get that punishment. Whatever it is, that doesn't mean we hate each other. That's why the most High God said don't exceed 40 stripes because you don't know what that 41st may bring. You give him 40 stripes, and guess what? Blindfold him so he don't even see who's doing it. Because then he's going to be mad at you later. Like, yo, you hit me kind of hard. <laughs> That's real. You kind of, you took that belt a little bit too far, my brother. But listen, judges and officers, but that doesn't mean that we hate each other. We don't got, I could disagree with you all the time, but that don't mean that you're not my brother, you're not my sister. Let's read. Is not the whole land before thee? Right. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then, then I'll I will go, go to, to the, the right. right. Or if thou shalt take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plains of the Jordan, that it was well watered right. everywhere, before Yehoah destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And so the garden of Yehoah, like the land of Mitzrayim, as thou goest unto Zoor. So when you think about this, when I thought about it this week, I said, this is a, a clear definition of what glitter is, isn't always gold. Everything on the, the grass is not always greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. Lot is looking at it with his eyes like, oh, that looks nice over there. Where he's about to go is terrible. Mm -hmm. And Abraham's like, if you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. There's plenty of land for all of us. But you got to be careful with what you think that you're going to do. That's for you young men and you young women when you think that you're going to a place or if you do your research before you go. You know, like with going to college and colleges, you say, oh, man, my cousin go there or my brother go there. Or, but you got to ask yourself, what are they doing there, too? Like, are they there to party? Are they there to learn? Are you there to really actually get an education? Ask those questions. I know it's good to be in, with your brothers and your sisters with camaraderie and all that good stuff. All that is fine. But you got to go there and, and do a real assessment and a real, do some research before you just say, I'm going to go here or I'm going to go there. Think about where you're going. I went to a school that nobody went to before me. I didn't even never heard of this school. But when I went there, I was fine. I felt good about it. I was good. I did what I had to do, got my education, and I came home. I went away for two years. I went upstate. I came home. People thought I was locked up. You tell people, hey, where you been? Oh, man, I, was, I went away. I was upstate. Uh, what you do? No, I went to school, fool. I was upstate in the university. Not upstate locked up. Just because you tell people you're up north, you got to be clear. Where you went? I'm, up, I'm was up north. Mm -hmm. Up north, up north, or up north school? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I went to SUNY Delhi, upstate New York. Right. I had a good time. I was away at school. I got my education, came home. Right. But I had, I had to do research. What's at this school? I wanted to go where my friends went, but would that have benefited me? Because guess what? A lot of them didn't finish school. So I think I made the right decision. And sometimes that goes back to this portion. Go to yourself. Go on your own. Sometimes you got to make your own moves. You got to do your own thing sometimes. Because you can't wait for other people. You can't be a follower. You got to be a leader. Let's read some more. So Lot chose him all the plain of the Jordan. And right. Lot journeyed east. And they separated themselves the one from the other. Uh-huh. 
Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, right. and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now, the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners against Jehovah exceedingly. exceedingly. And Jehovah said unto Abram, After that, Lot was separated from him. Lift up now thy eyes, and look from the place where art, well, thou art. Look northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest at the 15th verse, to thee will I give it. Now, and you see what the Most High said? He said, and Jehovah said unto Avraham, after that lot was separated from him, the Most High didn't tell the Avraham about his blessing until he was by himself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to make your own moves, brothers and sisters. Sometimes you got to go solo. Don't tell nobody about your plans either. Don't tell nobody about the blessings that's to come. Wait for the blessing to come. Then you can tell the people about the blessing and how you went about getting that blessing. But sometimes you got to make your own moves. He didn't, most high didn't even tell him. Lot was there. He said, nah, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to wait till he's gone. And it says, and Yehoah, once Lot was separated from him, now he told him, this is what you're going to get. Let's read. And I will make thy seed, at the 15th verse, as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. This is very important because at this time, Abraham has no children. He has no children. There's no child in sight. And he's saying him, tell, telling him, you're going to be blessed this, like the dust of the sand. Like, wow. Abraham can't even vision this. Let's read. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it. For unto thee will I give it. And Abraham moved his tent and came and dwelt by the terebinths of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built there an altar unto Jehovah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 14th chapter, the first verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it came to pass in the days of Araphel, king of Shanir, Ario, king of Elisar, Keldor, Laamir, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of Goim, that they made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Beersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Ahmad, and Shib Shemitbeer, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, the king of Bela, the same is Zoar. All these came as allies unto the vale of Shittim, the same is the salt sea. Twelve years they served Kedor la Amir, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. Mm -hmm. And in the fourteenth year came Shedor la Amir, and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephadim in Astaroth, Kedor. Karnaim, and the Zozim in Ham, and the Elim in Sheva Kirtaim, did I pronounce that accurately? Kirtaim. Kirtaim, and the Horites in their Mount Seir, unto Eparan, which is by the wilderness. And they turned back and came to Emisphat, the same is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites, and unto also the Amorites that dwelt in Hazazon Tamar. And there went out the king of Sodom, and the king of Gadamora, and the king of Ahmad, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, the same is the Or, and they set the battle in array against them in the vale of Shittim, against Chedor Laamir, king of Elam, and Tidal, and Tidal king of Goim, and Araphel, king of Sinir, and Ario, king of Eleazar, of Alasa, Salakli, four kings against the five. Mm -hmm. Now the vale of Shittim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fell, and they fell there. And they that remained fell or fled to the mountain, Slika. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took Lot. Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and they departed. So the whole point of this part was just to show you that there was a war going on, and that during this war, Lot was kidnapped, basically. Mm -hmm. Lot and his family, his, his possessions, they were all taken. So that's the point of going through these, these, this beef with these kings. So when they got this beef with these kings, Lot is kidnapped, and so now we get to this point where there's going to be a Hebrew that's going to go and tell Abram, Abram that Lot was kidnapped. Let's read. And there came one that had escaped at the 13th verse right. and told Abram the Hebrew. Now he dwelt by the terebinths of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and brother, brother of, of Amir, Anir, 
and these were confederate with Abram. So now you got Eshcol and, 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 and Ani, and these are his peoples, basically. These are his comrades. Mm -hmm. This is like what King David had, the, the Pelotites right. and the Kerethites. That's right. These are his goons, basically. So you got Ani and Eshcol. So Abram got people around him. Abram is not by himself. He has trained men. Let this be a, 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 a word to the wise for us men. Stay in shape. Amen. Hit that gym. Yeah. Hit that bench press. Amen. Get your cardio on. Mm -hmm. Do a little walking. Do a little exercise. Because you never know when you might have to defend your family. Amen. A lot of us like to eat. Sister been bringing cakes and pies lately. I've been seeing brothers go crazy in there. Yeah. <laughs> Going crazy about the cakes and the pies. You got to relax. You got to relax. You got to go. All right, if you do that on Shabbat, you're only showing I expect to see you in the gym. Because mm -hmm. this is not no game, brothers and sisters. I don't know if y'all paying attention to, to the energy that's out there. They're flaring up. They're ready. The road rages. Be careful. Be prepared. Exercise wisdom. Exercise knowledge. Exercise understanding. Get in that gym. Get in that range. Y'all know what the range is, right? Get in that range. Prepare thyself. Because mm -hmm. although the Most High God is our, our real word, and he watches over us, he also expects us to be prepared. Don't get caught slipping. As the young people say, don't get caught lacking. You know? Prepare yourself. So Avram is ready. He's trained. And he got 318 men ready for war. They're not going there to say, hey, excuse me, can I, can I get my nephew back? He's not going there for that. He's not going there for that. He might not even talk. Because he's on a mission. Let's read. And when Avram heard that his brother was taken captive, he led forth his trained men. Trained men. Born in his house. Uh -huh. 318. And pursued as far as dawn. So that also means while you're in the, in the gym and exercising, you might want to hit some pads. Because you got to know how to do a one-two. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to do a one-two, you better learn some grappling. Because you're going to, you know, they say 90% of fights end up on the floor. I don't agree with that. Because if I punch you in your face, you should end up on the floor. I should still be standing. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, it may end up on the floor. Amen. So learn a lock. Learn an arm bar. Amen. Learn some arm bars. Arm bars are important. Mm -hmm. Leg locks are important. Head locks are important. And sisters, hot boiling water, as my Abba would say. <laughs> it works. Do what you got to do. Because we can't be playing out there with, in these streets no more. You look at the news. I, I suggest if you don't want to look at the news, I got a channel for you to watch that really gets you going. Watch Fox. <laughs> Watch Fox News. They'll tell you. They're telling you they're ready. So be prepared. Let's read. And he divided himself against them by night at the 15th verse. He and his servants and smote them and pursued them unto Hobab. So he also had a plan, right? Amen. He divided them. He divided himself them by night. He and his servants and smote them and pursued them. So you got to have a plan. You go this way. I'm going to go this way. You got to know how to flank. You got to know certain things. This is things that we should be teaching from young, from young, go to the range, please. Take your children to the range, please. Let them know. Let them see how that is. Obviously, I'm talking the way I'm talking, but y'all have an understanding when I say that. We have to prepare ourselves. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Yeah, you could be the great Torah person. I love that. Be that. But you also better be prepared physically. Let's read. Which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods at the 16th verse and also brought back his brother Lot right. and all his goods and the women also. So he and got everything people. back that they took. He didn't get that just by playing around. He had to go in there and fight. He had to. But the Most High was with him. That's how he was able to get it. He got Lot back, his family back, and all his possessions. That's the creator, Most High. The Most High is showing his protection and showing his guidance over Avram. Let's read. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him. And after his return from the slaughter of Kedor Omir, 
and the kings that were with him, mm -hmm. and at the veil of Shiva, the same is the king's veil, and Melchizedek, king of Solomon, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of God, the Most High. Mm -hmm. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God, Most High, make of heaven and earth, and blessed be the God of the Most High, who have delivered thy enemies into thy hand. So now you got this Melchizedek that just pops out of nowhere, right? And they're like, he's the priest of God. Obviously, the Most High's name rings bells. And the Most High's already been around forever. So now Melchizedek is just the priest of God that we just didn't know about. You know how many people that are serving God right now that you don't know about? You got to be careful who you talk about. There's people over on the other side of this earth that is praising God. I look at YouTube videos and I look at all these different videos and videos of our brothers and sisters in Africa and all these different places. And they're singing the Shema. You're sitting there like, how do they learn that? The Most High God is everywhere. He said that he scattered us throughout the four corners of the earth. His name also was scattered throughout the whole earth. He knows, listen, the Most High God put us in positions to where wherever you go, you're going to see an Israelite. That's why I like the, the Olympics. When I see the Olympics and you see um, Russia, and there's a black man running for Russia, you're like, now how does that happen? Well, then go ahead, Vlad. I'm cheering for Vlad. <laughs> I'm cheering for Vlad. Da, da. Jean Dobre, Polish, whatever I got to do. I'm cheering for my people. You got the Greek freak, they call him. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, now, does that sound Greek? What does that sound like? Antetokounmpo. Sound African to me. That's one of our brothers. They call him the Greek freak. Because he's killing them basketball, but they call him Greek. And he actually plays for Greece. But he's ours. You can't claim that. That athletic ability, y'all ain't got that. That's all us. <laughs> this is our people. God scattered us all throughout the place. So now you got Melchizedek. He's saying that he's the king of the most, he's the priest of the most high. And he gave Abraham a, Abraham a blessing. Best be Abraham of God most high, make of heaven and earth. God's name is already ringing bells. And we don't even got the Torah yet. Let's read some. And he gave him a tenth of all. Right. This is where they get that. About the tithe. A tenth. Melch he gave him a tenth. Let's read. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. Hmm. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto Jehovah, God most high, maker Make of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth, that I will not take a thread, <laughs> nor a shoe latchet, no. nor aught that is thine. Lest thou should have saved. I have, I have made, made Avram rich. rich. See? Save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me, Anir, Esco, and Mamre, let them take their portion. See, the Most High God is making, Avram is making it clear that the Most High God is the only one that he's giving praise to, the only one he's giving thanks to, and nothing that you did to help me, but the Most High God is the one that helped me. That's how we have to think all the time. We get into these things in our minds and in our hearts and we think, oh man, we got to raise. I got to raise. Oh, thank you, white man. Thank you, boss. Thank you, supervisor. That is not who gave you the raise. God used that person to give you the raise. That's what happened. So when you get a blessing, thank God. Because God is the one that gave it to you. You get your promotion, thank God. In the same way when you get your punishment, that is God too. Get an understanding about that. You think, oh man, see, see, they only hating on me because this, um, I'm black and they white. Maybe. I'm not doubting that. But what I'm telling you is that if you're going through something, the most high God is putting you through it. And you need to call on God so that God can show you through it. Amen. That's how it goes. I'm telling y'all, brothers and sisters, I went through a hard time the last two years at my job. Tough time. And I'm like, wow, white man. And I said, hold on. I'm giving too much credit to these people. The Most High gave me a marker. He had to show me how to move in this enemy's land. So then he showed me and he restored me back. That's God doing that. It don't have nothing to do with nobody, no supervisor, no man did nothing. The Most High God gave me that blessing. And I understand it. You, don't, you go through stuff, you're like, man, you get down and... Oh, this thing happened. The Most High is trying to show you something. Ain't that what they did in the color purple? 
God is trying to tell you something. And they start clapping. God trying to tell you something. You think that everything belongs to this man and everything is around this man and your job. And that when God is trying to show you that it's him, he wants you to give him praise. He wants you to understand that I gave you this marker. I gave you this marker so that I could restore you in the eyes of your enemies and you don't even realize it. God did it to Yosef. Yosef went to jail. Yosef was 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 accused of committing adultery. Yosef was thrown in jail the hardest time. His brothers sold him. His own brothers. He went through all that just to be prince of Egypt. Do you understand what's going on? You got to go through something. Your name is Yisrael. It's the one who prevailed, um, who fought with God and man and prevailed. You got to go through something. Everybody go through something. It says, time and chance happen to us all. But God is king, brothers and sisters. I want y'all to understand that whatever you're going through, you got to call on God. God is going to get you through it. And although it may not happen so fast, so fast, so fast, be patient. Got to wait. The Psalms also said that, right? Wait on God. You got to wait. Let me tell you something. I waited. So I took my punishment. I waited. Two years, two years, technically 11 months, but the whole situation was two years. But now I'm restored back to my spot, right? They say it's the fastest that anyone's being restored. But in my mind, I'm thinking this is taking forever. But think how, you see what I'm saying? That's how God works. I'm saying to myself, this is taking forever. Oh my goodness, y'all, please, I'm praying, praying, please, please, please. Dude told me, oh. That never happened before. You got back so fast. I'm like, felt like forever to me. But God is forever. And his time is not our time. So you got to understand what you think may be long in your eyes. Somebody else on the outside looking at this, it took like that. So God is king, brothers and sisters. Whatever you're going through, call on God. Let God restore you back. The same way he restored Yosef, he can restore you as well. Be that prince of Egypt. You be that prince of Egypt at your place of, of business or whatever you're going through. Be the prince of Egypt. Grow. Go through something, but show, that God, show God that you are worthy and willing to work and that the Most High is going to restore you back to where you belong. You're going to go through something, but let God guide you. He got you. Amen. Let's read. 15th chapter, the first verse, hallelujah. Hallelujah. After these things, the word of Jehovah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, thy reward shall be exceeding great. Mm -hmm. And Abram said, O Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go hence childless? And he that shall be possessor of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. Mm -hmm. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is to be my heir. And behold, the word of Jehovah came unto him, saying, This man shall not be heir, thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. So brothers and sisters, listen to me here. You can't trick God, right? You can't trick God. You never could trick God. But what you can do is appeal to God. You can talk to God. Do you see how Avram talked to God? He said, God, I don't have any children. And the person that's going to be heir to my throne is Eliezer of Damascus. That's Avram's way of saying, God, please give me a child. Give me a child. And, I, and the Most High answered him and told him, listen, you're going to have a child from your own bowels. You got to use this active. You got to activate the Most High's powers. Amen. Sometimes we don't activate God's powers. You got to activate God's powers. Pray to God. Listen, when you go into that interview, I tell you all the time. You look around that room. If somebody in there, if you're the only one in there with fringes on, you're the only one in there that serve God. You're the only one in there that's Torah. You're the only one in there that call on the name of the Most High God. You're the only one that's keeping the holy days. You're the only one that's keeping Shabbat. Use that to your advantage when you talk to God, y'all. You see this room, right? Nobody in here called on your name today. Right. Yeah, you see this room? I'm the only one that said, Toda Yehoah to you today. 
I'm the only one that said hallelujah. I'm the only one in here. Y'all give me that job, please. And y'all going to bless you. But you got to activate your power. Activate your words. Use your words. You know what they tell me at my job? You got to know how to articulate. That's a big word in, this, in all my job. Articulation. Learn to articulate your praise and your honor and your respect to God. So that God can give you the things that you want, the things that you need, and the things that you desire. Call on God. Use God. God is there for you. God, please help me. I want, it, I want this job. I need this job. I got things I want to buy. Whatever your reasons are, talk to God. God already knows the reasons. That's the greatness of God. God already knows your prayer. God already knows your heart. God already knows your mind. But if you don't say it, it's the same with the fast. God already knows what you did. But what did he tell you to do? Confess. Mm -hmm. So you got to talk to God. Let's read. And he brought him forth abroad and said at the fifth verse, look now toward heaven and count the stars. If thou be able to count them. And he said unto him, so, so shall, shall I see be. Be. So what I got from this is most, the most high keeps reassuring Avram. He keeps reassuring him over and over. You see this earth, you see the sea, the sand. If you could count them, the stars, if you could count them, that's how your seed is going to be. He said that about three times already. Sometimes you got to reassure. Be reassurance for your family. Be reassurance for your loved ones. Be reassurance for, let them know, I got you. Mm -hmm. I got your back. I'm not going to fail you. I got you. The most high God is reassuring him over and over and over. Let's read. And he believed in Yehovah. And he believed in Yehovah. And he counted it to him for righteousness. And he counted it. Trusting in Yehovah is counted as righteousness. Mm -hmm. I believe that God is going to bless me. I believe that. I believe. Yeah, I believe you're going to make me rich. I believe that. I'm, I believe that. I receive that. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you got to believe in this creator. Believe in God and feel like, listen, God got me. All the stuff I'm, that's going on, I'm telling y'all, it don't matter about no president. It doesn't. What matters is how you do with each other and how you treat the most high and do you respect God. Did you go running and, and be scared when they told you, oh, you got to work on Shabbat? Did you go and do it? See, that's the part. Show God that you trust him. Yah, I trust you. When I went through, and, and listen, you got to have people around you that talk knowledgeable too. Mm -hmm. When I went through what I went through, I told my Ema, I'm quitting. She said, no, you're not. She said, don't quit. I said, Ema, I'm going to quit. She said, don't quit. She then called my brothers and sisters to have them call me to tell me. Oh, I'm like, Imagine this. Now, I'm, I, I don't mean to throw my brother under the, under the, under the uh, bus, but my brother called me from the Basel Hall telling me, don't quit. Like, <laughs> who was you? How were you telling me something? You were there. But, it, but that's just how the most high works. Right. Hearing him tell me that made me really be like, nah, I really can't. If this fool telling me something, <laughs> I can't quit. Mm -hmm. But it makes sense. You need people around you that's going to tell you wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Amen. And then you get that understanding. You trust in the most high. And you go to God. God, is she telling me the right thing? Your mother not going to steer you wrong. That's right. She steered me right. And I'm back to where I belong. Because God is king. Amen. I'm just trying to tell y'all how this. I'm being very transparent with y'all today. I'm just letting y'all know that God is king. And when you go through stuff, you got to just trust in the most high. Amen. He got you. Let's read. And he said unto him at the seventh verse, I am Yehovah that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, O Lord God, whereby should I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took them all these and divided them in the midst and laid each half over against the other mm -hmm. but the birds divided he not then the birds of prey came down upon the carcasses and Avram drove them away and it came to pass that when the sun was going down a deep sleep fell upon Avram and lo a dread even a great darkness fell upon him and he said unto Avram 
No of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Mm -hmm. and, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict him, them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Ain't nothing changed. Brothers and sisters, it's the same thing. Nothing changed. We are in the land that is not ours. We are strangers in this land. We have been serving these people. They have been afflicting us. And God said he's going to visit them. So don't worry. I'm telling you, God got us. Let's read. And afterwards, they shall come out with great substance. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, at the 15th verse, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. So you see, he said, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. That's that riches that I'm talking about. So after this, we going home, we going to be rich, brothers and sisters. We going to have all the things. Y'all think I'm, I'm fancy now. I'm going to have a crown up to the roof when I get rich, boy. I'm, I ain't going to be playing. I'm, I'm going to need, I'm going to have a car, right? My car going to have a car. That's how my car gonna have a car. I'm gonna be like night rider. The truck that the car come out the truck and then I might drive. Y'all Tesla don't got nothing on the stuff that I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna have the computer drive me and I want the computer to also open the door for me. It's gonna ask me how I'm feeling too. How was your day? It was pretty good, car. <laughs> That's what I want. I saw a thing. The other day, a meme and said, I might not tell you that I'm rich, but there'll be signs that I'm rich. And then the guy had a bed that made his bed for him, tucked him in the bed, put the pillow on him, did everything. All he had to do was just lay there. And that's how you're going to know that I'm rich. See, I'm going to have, I'm not even walk, I might not walk anymore once I'm rich. I might have like an elevator just always next to me to where I just glide. I'm just going to glide. I'm not going to walk. Why would I waste my steps? <laughs> We're supposed to be rich. Start thinking about your rich stuff. Because I'm going to think about my stuff. I don't know if I told you I'm going to have diamond drums, gold drums with diamonds all around it. I don't know how they're going to sound, but they sure going to be nice. They're going to look nice. They're going to look good. I'm going to have nice gold timbales. My cowbell going to be gold. I might have a computer hitting the cowbell for me because I'm, why do I need to do it? <laughs> I might just put it on a timer. I'm going to give Ooze a voice. I'm going to make him synchronize his voice. Not like auto-tune, but every time Ooze sings, it's going to sound like amazing. Ooze, you hear me? I'm going to get you a voice, my brother. <laughs> We're going to be rich, brothers and sisters. Let's read some more. And in the fourth generation, at the 16th verse, they shall come back hither for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet, is yet not full. Yet full. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and there was a thick darkness, behold, a smoking furnace and a flaming torch that passed between these pieces. In that day, Jehovah made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. From the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenite and the Kizanite and the Kamonite and the Hittite and the Pezzarite and the Rephim and the Rephidim and the Rephim and the Rephim and the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Gershonite and the Jebusite. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got a couple more chapters. Let's read some more. 16th chapter first. Now I get a little bit more interesting. A little bit more interesting. Hallelujah. I need to, I should have some more brothers in here, but it's okay. <laughs> now Sarah Abram's wife bore him no children. Uh-huh. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, uh -oh. whose name was Hagar. Uh oh. And Sarah said unto Abram, Uh-huh. Behold now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. Let's just be clear before I continue. It says that Sarai said it first, right? Avram was chilling, probably playing hoops with his friends. Oh, this little ball, minding his business, doing his thing. And then she came, hey, Avram, you know, I have no children. And he like, okay, I'm listening. Continue. Behold now, Jehovah have restrained me from bearing. Go in, I pray thee, unto my handmaid. It may be 
that I shall be built up through her. Mm -hmm. And Abram hearkened to the wife, to the voice of Sarai. Uh -huh. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her handmaid, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to Abram, her husband, I to be. I his would poll a question right now. Do do sisters, do y'all want us to listen to y'all or not? <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all want us to listen to y'all or no? Yes? No? At certain times? What about during the game? Good question. I don't know. All right. So he listened to the voice of Sarai. Let's read. And he went in unto Hagar, mm -hmm. and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Now look at this. So now Hagar has the baby. Everything is all right. And now Sarai... I mean, Hagar's acting like she's the boss. Like she's in charge. So now, Sarai's like, what's going on here? She goes to her husband. Let's read. And Sarai said unto Abram, My, my wrong, wrong be upon, upon thee. I gave my handmaid unto thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I, I was, was despised in her, in her eyes. eyes. Jehovah judged between to me and, and thee. thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her that which is good in thine eyes. So Avram did what he had to do. He said, that's your handmaid. Do what you got to do. I ain't telling you what to do, but this is your decision. Because the whole situation, it was on you. And she said it. My wrong be upon thee. I, I put this on you. Let's read some more. And Sarai dealt harshly with her. And she fled from her face. Now, I don't know what the harsh part was, because it don't say. But I could imagine what happened. I don't know if she just said, get on, get your stuff, and you got to go. I don't know if she took a piece of the bull works or whatever, the bushes, and did what she had to do. I don't know if she gave her a nice sandal to the face, a chancleta, <laughs> a chancla, or whatever. I'm not sure what happened, but she dealt harshly with her. So much so that she said, I'm out. And she bounced. Let's read. Then the angel of Jehovah found her by a fountain of water uh -huh. in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to shore. And he said at the eighth verse, Hagar, Sarah's handmaid. Check this out. He had to put her in place. The angel had to let her know, Hagar, Sarah's handmaid. When's know, coming? Know bro. your place. Stay in your position. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Whence comest thou? Uh -huh. And whither thou goest? Mm -hmm. And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarah. Mm -hmm. And the angel of Jehovah said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself unto her. You heard how my reader read that? That's how it was. That's how it was. Crying. What, what, what your problem is? What the problem is? The angel told her, go, go back and submit yourself to your, to your mistress. Because you don't got no right to do that. You, had, you, you got out of... Listen, when she probably got back, Sarah probably said, I made you. Why would I play you? Right. How to hit her with a line. Right. Mm -hmm. What you think this is? Go back. Submit yourself under her hands. You, must have, you got it twisted. Let's read. Then the angel of Jehovah said unto her, I will greatly multiply thy seed, right. that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Because it's still Avram's seed. Amen. Let's read. And the angel of Jehovah said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son. And thou shalt call his name Yishmael. God heareth. Because Jehovah have heard thy, thy affliction. affliction. See, the Most High God is merciful. And he shall be as a wild ass of a man. His hand shall be against every man. Do y'all know who that is? Y'all know who that is, that Yishmaelite? Mm -hmm. Is that not the truth? The is truth. that not the Most High's word being real? That's right. Everyone is against this boy. This man is against everybody. He don't care. He might Aki you to death. Hey, what's up, Ak? What's up, Ak? 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 Yeah, but right. deep down, he's against everybody. That's true. Nobody. No love for nobody. That's your, 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 your local store owner. Yeah. <laughs> Your local store owner, better known as the Yemenite, the, the Arab, the this, the everyone that's, the, all those people from that, that 
area that look like us but not like us? Because they are family. Mm -hmm. They are. Listen, we got the same father. That's right. When I tell them in the store, I'm like, yo, I, yo, I got this. I, I, could t I, could, I got this. Because we brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because you from Yishmael, I'm from Yishkab. They be like, yeah, 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 Ibrahim. Yeah, Abraham, cool. Mm -hmm. We know. Right. We know. They know. They do. They know. So when they do their stuff, I just be like, just wait till you do it because I need to be home before you do that. <laughs> please, please wait. Before you do your thing, just let me go home. Let my family get to where they got to go. Listen, we are, this people right here, they are hated more than anybody. You can't. They they'll go against anybody. You you think that you going in that store? You think they going you going punk them? Nah, I was the, in, the, in the store the other day, and a dude took like a, a soda, and he told him, yo bro, yo yo, this a, that's a dollar, bro. He like no, he said it was two dollars. He said the black dude said I gave you a dollar already. The dude said yo, it's two dollars. The dude tried to walk out the store, and that young boy came from around us. Give me that dollar. They not scared of nobody. That spirit, this is it. They, listen. What it say? And the angel of Jehovah said unto her, Behold, thou with child shall be a son, shall call his name Yishmael, because Jehovah have heard thy affliction. And he shall be a wild ass of a man. His hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. I remember when 9-11 happened, and those local store owners, they got Busy. They strapped up. They wasn't playing with nobody coming in here talking about y'all did this, y'all did that. They was like, all right, y'all come in here if y'all want to. Come in here if y'all want to. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, this is a true prophecy right here. They are truly the sons of Ishmael. Let's read. Middle of the 12th verse. And every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the face of all his brethren. Right. And she called the name of Yehovah, that spoke unto her, Thou art a God of seeing, for she said, Have I even seen him that seeth me? Right. Wherefore the well was called Be'er be Laha Ro'ai. Be'er Laha Ro'ai, the well of the living one who sees me. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Berit. And Hagar bore Abram a son. Right. And Abram called his name. The name of his son, whom Hagar bore, Yishmael. Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bore Yishmael to Abram. Hagar so listen, Yishmael. brothers and sisters, I know sometimes we think, oh, that's biblical times, that's biblical times, that's biblical times. For all my brothers and sisters that's going through something as far as being barren, when the Most High God is ready to give you what he's going to give you, the Most High God will do so. The Most High God's power is infinite. The Most High God can do what he wants when he wants. 86 years old, having your first child, and we be getting mad at 35 and 40, talking about I'm not having no children yet. You better look at this book and read this book and see when Sarah had a baby and when Abraham had his first. Don't limit the power of God. You call on God. And the Most High God will answer you. And then if, guess what? Go to God. Go to the physician. And seek help. It's called wisdom, brothers and sisters. You never know what could be blocking or what could be doing, whatever. I'm not a doctor, but I do know that God is the doctor of doctors. And that if he wants to heal you, he will heal you. And if he wants you to have children, you will have children even if you're 90, 85, whatever age. God is judge and God is king over all of those things. So... Call on God. Let's read some. Let's Final. finish this out. Last chapter, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I'm be done by two. And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, Jehovah appeared to Abram and said unto uh -huh. him, "I am God Almighty. Right. Walk before me and be right. thou wholehearted. And be thou wholehearted. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Right. And Abram fell on his face, and, and God, God talked talk with him, him, saying, "As for me, behold." My covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be the father, father of a multitude of nations. nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, mm -hmm. but thy name shall be Abraham. Right, so oh. now his name is changed 
from exalted father to the father of many nations, mm -hmm. the father of a multitude. Now Abraham is gaining his position. He's in his position now as the father of a multitude, the father of nations. This is why we are the children of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. I'm not going to skip the stories, but this is the beginning. Abraham is now here. He's always here, but now he's Abraham. His name is changed. That means with your name, your name has power. You can't be a, a, a Mekubaja and be a bum. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. I can't be that. I have to be, God is honorable. I have to live in that. I can't be a bum. I can't be out there stealing, doing nastiness, doing foul stuff, and my name is Mekubaja, being a mugshot, Mekubaja. <laughs> can't do that. Right. You can't do that. You're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. You got to live up to your name. You got to live up to your name. Your name holds weight. You know, they say you have nothing but your name. Your name is important. Out there talking about your name is Mekubaja and you out there stealing. How? Get it. No, 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 no. Live up to your name. God is honorable. That's my name. I have to honor God in everything that I do. Let's read some. For the father of a multitude of nations mm -hmm. have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and right. I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. You know, brothers and sisters, you see this part right here? He said, I will, a father of a multitude of nations, neither shall thy name be. He said, I'm going to make you exceeding fruitful. These people are getting upset because they feel that their people are being exterminated or that they're going to be extinct. But what do you expect to be when we come from Torah and we say we be fruitful and multiply and you only want us to have 1.2 kids? <laughs> what is the point two anyway? <laughs> that's, that's their name. That's, oh, you can have 1.5, 1.2 kids. How? God told us to be fruitful and multiply. There were seven of us in one house. I was okay. I was okay. You sleep on the floor one day, you might catch a bed one day. Mm -hmm. It's all right. It teach you toughness. Right. <laughs> it teach you to be tough. Mm -hmm. Get your back in order. Right. You slip on that floor. You find you find out quick sleeping on the floor. But when y'all go to your grandparents or to y'all such your friends' house, y'all sleep on the floor anyway. Mm -hmm. Ask me for a pillow. You better use your jeans. Right. Ask me for no pillow. That's your right. jeans is your pillow. Right. Your jacket is your pillow. Right. Your book bag is your pillow. Y'all getting fancy. Y'all get too, y'all get too beside yourself. Mm -hmm. Too big for your britches. Use that turban as your pillow. <laughs> what you talking about? Mm -hmm. Be fruitful and multiply. God told us be fruitful and multiply. I don't want no 1.2 children. I don't even know what a point two is. What is a point two of a child? A midget? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. God told us be fruitful and multiply. Get the bag. Get your lady and get you some children. And let's roll. Amen. Let's read some more. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee at the seventh verse. Right. And I seed after thee throughout their generation mm -hmm. for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee. And to thy seed after, after thee. That's us, brothers and sisters. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the mm -hmm. land of thy sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Mm -hmm. And God said unto Abraham, As for thee, thou shalt keep my covenant, thou and thy seed after thee throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep, between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every male among you shall be circumcised. Right, so now, brothers and sisters, every male among you shall be circumcised. He never said anything about females. That is not a practice that we practice. That is a barbaric practice. We do not do that. It specifically says every male among you shall be circumcised. And it's going to tell us even what day to do it on the eighth day of their life. Let's read. And ye shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a token of a We're covenant, covenant between, between me and, and you. you. And he that is eight, eight days old days. shall be circumcised mm -hmm. among you. Every male throughout your generations, he that is born in the house or brought with money of any foreigner, 
that is not of thy seed. Mm -hmm. He that is born in thy house, at the 13th verse, and he that is brought with money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised male, which is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He have broken my covenant. So when we, when we have children, when we have young men, young male children, on the eighth day of their life, they get circumcised. I don't know who you go to, but you better get him circumcised and make sure that he's a part of the covenant. That puts him in the covenant. The daughters, we don't do that to the daughters and never say anything about female circumcision. Let's be clear on that. I know that there's some there's some people in like different parts of Africa that do that. That is a barbaric practice. Yeah. And for most of the for most parts of Africa, it has been banned, which is good. But I'm sure there's still some places that do it. So we don't do that. Eighth day male, circumcised. Amen. Amen. And you always said unto Prophet Abraham, as for Sarah thy wife. Thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. So now her name is Princess. Princess. Sarah. Mm -hmm. And I will bless her, and moreover I will give thee a son of oh, her. Right. Yea, I will bless her, uh -huh. and she shall be the mother, mother of, of nations. nations. Kings of people shall be of her. And she's, she's already up there in age. We're gonna, I'm not going to go into next week's portion, but she's already up there in age. Let's read. Then Prophet Abraham fell upon his face. And, and laughed and, and said in his heart, shall a child be born of him that is a hundred years old? Uh -huh. And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And prophet Abraham said unto Yehoah, oh that Ishmael might live before thee. And Yehoah said, nay, but Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son, mm -hmm. and thou shalt call his name Yitzchak. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his seed after him. So once again, the Most High God is showing that you can never doubt him. Amen. You Amen. can never doubt the Most High. Talk when the Most High God it. says he's going to do something, his word does not come back. Void, brothers and sisters. He said, Abraham even doubted it. He said, I'm 100. Cyrus 90. Is that possible? Anything is possible with the Most High. Anything is possible when you have trust in the Most High. He even gave him the name of the son. Told him his name's going to be Yitzchak. He told him that. The Most High God. And you know what? Look, he gave him the name Yitzchak, which the root of it is laugh. Right. Mm -hmm. To laugh, because why? He laughed. Listen, right. when I heard that my daughter was a daughter, I said, word? <laughs> That's why her name is Mila. Because it means word. Because I was like, word? <laughs> I'm having a girl? And then guess her middle name is what? Yael. Because God is God. So me la yael, that's how you that's how things happen. I said, word? There you go. When the nurse said, It's a girl, I wanted to punch her in her face. But I love my daughter. <laughs> but I was just thinking, I thought I was gonna be like the guy guy. I was gonna have all boys. Not so. The most I said, no, no, no. Mila. I said, Word. God is God. Mila Yael. Let's read some more. And as for Yishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Mm -hmm. Twelve princes shall he beget. That's right. And I will make him a great nation. <laughs> same thing that we have. We have twelve sons. Yishmael have twelve princes. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. But my covenant will I establish with Yitzchak, right. whom Sarah shall bore unto thee at this set time in the next year. Wow, he even gave him a time. He told him when it was going to happen and everything. The Most High God is amazing, brothers and sisters. Profound. And he left off talking with him, and Yehoah went up from Abraham. And Prophet Abraham took Yishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were brought with money, every male among the men of Prophet Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin mm -hmm. in the same day as Jehovah had said unto him. And Prophet Abraham was 90 years and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Yishmael his son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And the self same day was Prophet Abraham circumcised, and Yishmael his son, and all the men of his house, those bought, born in the house, and those brought with money of a foreigner, were circumcised with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, the Most High God, for all things and for everything. Brothers and sisters, as we get into our history, as we learn more about our, our ancestors and our, our forefathers and our foremothers, I pray that we really dive into it and get into this. This is a blessed portion. It's a blessed history. It's our history. This is who we are, so we have to take pride in this. I give thanks and praise to the Almighty King for all things and for everything. I say,